an advanced gas-cooled reactor is a specific type of nuclear reactor. These are the second generation of British gas-cooled reactors, using graphite as the neutron moderator and carbon dioxide as coolant. The AGR was developed from the Magnox reactor, and operates at a higher gas temperature for improved thermal efficiency, but requires stainless steel fuel cladding to withstand the higher temperature. Because the stainless steel fuel cladding has a higher neutron capture cross-section than Magnox fuel cans, enriched uranium fuel is needed, with the benefit of higher burn-ups of 18,000 MWT days per tonne of fuel, requiring less frequent refueling. The first prototype AGR became operational in 1962 but the first commercial AGR did not come online until 1976. All existing AGR power stations are configured with two reactors in a single building. Each reactor has a design thermal power output of 1,500 MWT driving a 660 MWE turbine alternator set. The various AGR stations produce outputs in the range 555 MWE to 670 MWE though some run at lower than design output due to operational restrictions. AGR Design the design of the AGR was such that the final steam conditions at the boiler stop valve were identical to that of conventional coal-fired power stations, thus the same design of turbo generator plant could be used. The mean temperature of the hot coolant leaving the reactor core was designed to be 648 a degree Celsius. In order to obtain these high temperatures, yet ensure useful graphite core life a re-entrant flow of coolant at the lower boiler outlet temperature of 278 degrees Celsius is utilized to cool the graphite, ensuring that the graphite core temperatures do not vary too much from those seen in a Magnox station. The superheater outlet temperature and pressure were designed to be 2485 Psi and 543 degrees Celsius. The fuel is uranium dioxide pellets, enriched to 2.5 to 3.5 percent, in stainless steel tubes. The original design concept of the AGR was to use a beryllium-based cladding. When this proved unsuitable, the enrichment level of the fuel was raised to allow for the higher neutron capture losses of stainless steel cladding. This significantly increased the cost of the power produced by an AGR. The carbon dioxide coolant circulates through the core reaching 640 degrees Celsius and a pressure of around 40 bar, and then passes through boiler assemblies outside the core but still within the steel-lined, reinforced concrete pressure vessel. Control rods penetrate the graphite moderator and a secondary system involves injecting nitrogen into the coolant to hold the reactor temperature down. A tertiary shutdown system which operates by injecting boron balls into the reactor is included in case the reactor has to be depressurized with insufficient control rods lowered. This would mean that nitrogen pressure cannot be maintained. The AGR was designed to have a high thermal efficiency of about 41%, which is better than modern pressurized water reactors which have a typical thermal efficiency of 34%. This is due to the higher coolant outlet temperature of about 640 degrees Celsius practical with gas cooling, compared to about 325 degrees Celsius for PWRs. However the reactor core has to be larger for the same power output, and the fuel burn-up ratio at discharge is lower so the fuel is used less efficiently, countering the thermal efficiency advantage. Like the Magnox, CANDU and RBMK reactors, and in contrast to the light water reactors, AGRs are designed to be refueled without being shut down first. This unload refueling was an important part of the economic case for choosing the AG over other reactor types, and in 1965 allowed the Central Electricity Generating Board and the government to claim that the AGR would produce electricity cheaper than the best coal-fired power stations. However fuel assembly vibration problems arose during unload refueling at full power. So in 1988 full power refueling was suspended until the mid 1990s when further trials led to a fuel rod becoming stuck in a reactor core only refueling at part load or when shut down is now undertaken at AGRs the AGR was intended to be a superior british alternative to american light water reactor designs it was promoted as a development of the operationally successful magnox design and was chosen from a multitude of competing British alternatives, the helium-cooled high-temperature reactor, 
the steam-generating heavy water reactor and the fast breeder reactor, as well as the American light water pressurized and boiling water reactors and Canadian CANDU designs. The CEGB conducted a detailed economic appraisal of the competing designs and concluded that the AGR proposed for Donchner's B would generate the cheapest electricity, cheaper than any of the rival designs and the best coal-fired stations. There were great hopes for the AGR design. An ambitious construction program of five twin reactor stations, Dungeness B, Hinkley Point B, Hunterston B, Hartlepool and Haysham was quickly rolled out, and export orders were eagerly anticipated. However, the AGR design proved to be over-complex and difficult to construct on-site. Notoriously bad labor relations at the time added to the problems. The lead station, Dungeness B was ordered in 1965 with a target completion date of 1970. After problems with nearly every aspect of the reactor design it finally began generating electricity in 1983, 13 years late. The following reactor designs at Hinkley Point and Hunterston significantly improved on the original design and indeed were commissioned ahead of Dungeness. The next AGR design at Haysham 1 and Hartlepool sought to reduce overall cost of design by reducing the footprint of the station and the number of ancillary systems. The final two AGRs at Taunus and Haysham do returned to a modified Hinkley design and have proved to be the most successful performers of the fleet. Former Treasury economic adviser, David Henderson, described the AGR program as one of the two most costly British government-sponsored project errors, alongside Concorde. The small-scale prototype AGR at the Sellafield site is being decommissioned. This project is also a study of what is required to decommission a nuclear reactor safely. Current AGR reactors, currently there are seven nuclear generating stations each with two operating AGRs in the United Kingdom, owned and operated by EDF Energy. In 2005 British Energy announced a 10-year life extension at Dungeness B. That will see the station continue operating until 2018, and in 2007 announced a five year life extension of Hinkley Point B and Hunterston B until 2016. Life extensions at other AGRs will be considered at least three years before their scheduled closure dates. From 2006, Hinkley Point B and Hunterston B have been restricted to about 70% of normal MWE output because of boiler related problems requiring that they operate at reduced boiler temperatures. In 2013 these two stations' power increased to about 80% of normal output following some plant modifications. In 2006 AGRs made the news when documents were obtained under the Freedom of Information Act 2000 by The Guardian who claimed that British Energy were unaware of the extent of the cracking of graphite bricks in the cores of their reactors. It was also claimed that British Energy did not know why the cracking had occurred and that they were unable to monitor the cause without first shutting down the reactors. British Energy later issued a statement confirming that cracking of graphite bricks is a known symptom of extensive neutron bombardment and that they were working on a solution to the monitoring problem. Also, they stated that the reactors were examined every three years as part of statutory outages. On December 17, 2010, EDF Energy announced a five-year life extension for both Haysham 1 and Hartlepool to enable further generation until 2019. In February 2012 EDF announced it expects seven-year life extensions on average across all AGRs, including the recently life-extended Haysham 1 and Hartlepool. These life extensions are subject to detailed review and approval, and are not included in the table above. On December 4, 2012 EDF announced that Hinkley Point B and Hunterston B have been given seven-year life extensions, from 2016 to 2023. On November 5, 2013 EDF announced that Hartlepool had been given a five-year life extension, from 2019 to 2024. In 2013 a defect was found by a regular inspection in one of the eight-pod boilers of Haitian Reactor A1. The reactor resumed operation at a lower output level with this pod boiler disabled, until June 2014 when more detailed inspections confirmed a crack in the boiler spine. As a precaution Haysham A2 and the sister Hartlepool station were also closed down for an eight weeks inspection. In October 2014 a new kind of crack in the graphite moderated bricks was found at the Hunterston B reactor. This keyway root crack has been previously theorized but not observed. 
the existence of this type of crack does not immediately affect the safety of a reactor a euro however if the number of cracks exceed a threshold the reactor would be decommissioned, as the cracks cannot be repaired. In January 2015 Dungeon SB was given a 10-year life extension, with an upgrade to control room computer systems and improved flood defenses, taking the accounting closure date to 2028. See also, Nuclear Power in the United Kingdom, List of Nuclear Reactors. References External links, Advanced Gas Cooled Reactors, IAEA Conference Paper, September 1980, Project WAGR, Decommissioning the Windscale AGR, AGR Estimated Closure Dates, House of Lords Hansard Column WA232, February 24, 2005. Review of graphite core issues at Hinkley Point B and other AGRs, Large and Associates for Greenpeace, British Energy's Bifurcation Blues, Nuclear Engineering International, November 22, 2006, Account of Visiting Taunus AGR, Charlie Strauss.